Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so this is going to be sort of part three of the Gigabyte Z490 uh, 10700K overclocking video series. Today we're going to be working on overclocking the memory. We've done the CPU, um, the CPU settings are currently, you know, saved, and we're, we're not going to get rid of them because RAM has less effect on overall performance than, sh like, CPU clock, so we're, we're adding the RAM to the existing settings. Uh, anyway, um, the memory kit that I'm using is this stuff right here. Um, so this is Team Group's T-Force Extreme ARGB memory. Uh, this is a 3600 CL14 kit. Um, they also have significantly looser bins, which uh, I, as far as I know, those are Hynix DJR. Um, but this right here, this is 3600 CL14. So right out of the box, it is basically as fast as, as, as it gets for a 3600 megahertz kit. And it is Samsung V-Die, so overclocking-wise, this has a ton of headroom, um, which is what we're going to be showing off today. Anyway, um, the thing is... Uh, wait, where was I going with that? Um, right, so the... Well, okay, so the cool thing with having a sort of like a 3600 CL14 kit, in my opinion at least, is that... Um, already out of the... Like, 3600 megahertz is a speed that just basically always works. Um, so you don't really, like, if you buy a kit that's rated, like, 4400 CL19, which, uh, like, from, I did a little bit of, like, I, I, this is not a full review, this is mostly going to be focusing on overclocking the kit, but I've done some comparison testing between this kit and some of my other kits, and this, these are basically the, like, best for at least low, vol like, lower voltage behavior, these are some of the best sticks I have in my collection, so... Yeah, um, these are really, really good. And the thing is, like, a lot of the other sort of, like, top bins for, for Samsung v die are, you know, like, 4266, 4400, 4600, 4800 megahertz. And when you get into those really high frequencies, you actually run into the problem of, like, your memory controller probably can't deal with that. Motherboard compatibility issues, like... The XMP profiles on kits rated above 4,000 are, as far as I'm concerned, not exactly reliable, which personally I don't have a problem with because I don't really use XMP at all. Um, but most people probably, like, they don't want to go right off into the deep end when it comes to memory overclocking with potentially their first memory kit, um, which is where something like this being a 3600 CL14 kit has a huge advantage because it is really fast out of the box, um, but you can also overclock it to be significantly faster. So, anyway, um, well, like, this will actually overclock similar to, like, the 4400 CL19 kits that I have in my collection. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of the neat thing here. Anyway, um, so here's the, the overclock that I already have on the 10700K. It's just 5.05 gigahertz at... Uh, like the the voltage is borderline this is about as much voltage as i'd be willing willing to set for the v core um the memory voltage is already bumped up to 1.5 volts because i'm running that 101 megahertz bclk so the the kit has a one percent memory overclock on it already we're not going to do a baseline performance test because i already measured the baseline performance the kit spits out a little under thousand seven thousand points in uh, geekbench 3 the goal here is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can do like 8.5, 8.6, may maybe 8.7 thousand points uh, for Geekbench 3. So let's, uh, let's get into that. Um, wait, we're at CL17, are we? No. Are, wait, are we actually? We might be, because... Uh, Wait, oh no, I didn't want to go into the BIOS. Yeah, this is what I get for running the BCLK out, out of... Out, like, not at 100. Alright, capture card. There we go. So, for memory overclocking on Intel, the most useful utility you can get is ASRock Timing uh, Configurator. And yeah, it's at 17. Okay. Well, I mean, that <laughs> doesn't really make too much of a difference, but like, I, it does mean that some of the, like, the performance I, I was getting before, like, well, 
yeah, that, that does cause some issues. But, like, it, it's not a concern for the overclocking. It's just kind of like, I, I didn't notice that. And that, that is annoying. Um, anyway, I wonder if that goes away if I drop the memory to 3500. Because the kit shouldn't need to run... Oh, wait, I'll also have to set the RTLs back to auto. Yeah, that's probably what did it. So the thing is, with uh, running the, the kit with that 1% overclock is just like the motherboard gets very upset about that, which uh, meant that I was forced to lock in the RTLs and IOLs, but at the time I hadn't realized the board loosened it out to CL17. So it's kind of an issue. And really, like, if you weren't me, what you should have done was just set it to 3500 um, when you raise the BCLK, like I did. Um, So, also, I want you guys to be able to see the postcode. There we go. Just going to stretch that out. And, oh, uh, well, we can go to Windows. There's not really an issue with that. The capture card didn't derp out for once. Um, right. How's Rock Timing Configurator? Yeah, now we're back at 14. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what I get for... For the VCLK overclock. Yay me. Um, like, if you didn't leave all the timings on auto, that wouldn't be an issue, but... I wasn't really, like, paying attention to the memory settings. Anyway, um, so let's do this. We're going to start with 18, 22, 22. So, uh, like... All memory overclocking, I always start with just loosening out the timings quite a lot. And the, the reasoning behind this is very, very simple. The first thing I want to do with any memory kit is figure out what kind of frequency uh, we can run at first. And then worry about what kind of timings I can get it to. Because um, most memory control, like modern memory controllers are generally designed to prioritize memory bandwidth over latency. Because... RAM is, like, the memory latency is always bad. Even when you have, like, crazy tight timings, like, the, the latency of the RAM compared to the cache is terrible. So the memory controller of your CPU is going to be trying very hard to not be latency bound on, on any kind of workload. So the priority is to get good bandwidth. And the cool thing is, a lot of the time, bandwidth actually goes hand in hand with latency, so it's not like we're going to end up with uh, with uh, completely terrible, which reminds me I didn't run IDA. So we, we should actually just run IDA at the auto settings. Yay. Hooray for, me <laughs> Hooray for memory overclocking videos. <laughs> they always end up taking way longer. The thing is, RAM is like... RAM is just RAM until you get into it and then you realize, wait a minute... <laughs> This is way more complicated than everybody makes it sound. Um, freaking capture card. Come on, there we go. So, yeah, I just want to see, like, an idle latency test. Because um, the thing is, we're going to drop, like, the late... I expect to end up with less latency than we start with. But though, actually, that might be really difficult considering the RTLs and IOLs we're at right now. We'll see. Oh, no. No, 41.8 nanoseconds. I, I think I can match that. I, I can probably match that at, like, way higher frequencies. So that's not really a concern. I also want to get an idea of the read bandwidth. And we're just getting 53 gig gigs per second. So 53 gigs and 42 nanoseconds. So I want to hit, like... 65, 67 gigs per second. We should be able to do that. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. First up, the timings. We're going to start with 18, 22, 22, 40. Um, there are other loose timing options, but this is a relatively common, like, like, if you look at a lot of high-speed VDI kits, well, actually, if we went with, like, a high-speed VDI XMP, we would probably go with, like, a 19, 19, 19, or 18, 19, 19, 39, uh, and then you would run it at, like, 4,400, which we're not going to go all the way to 4,400 right off the bat. We're going to, like, I want to start with 4,000, just because 4,000 is, 
a relatively reliable speed, as in I don't expect it to have issues. So we're going to start with 4,000, then we're going to go up to 4,133, then to 4,266, then to 4,400. And why, that, like, see, this is why you didn't, don't skip straight to 4,400. Why isn't it training? How on earth is that managing to not work? It's going to give us a boot failure detected? No. Oh. Man, that training procedure was... Well, now the RTLs are roughly what I'd expect, so 1576. Um, not really seeing any issues, though. Anyway. So I'm actually going to skip 4133. I don't want to be here all day. We go to 4266, which should be no problem whatsoever for this kit. In fact, I expect this kit to hit 4400 CL17. That's kind of my goal. Um, will the CPU do 4400 CL17? I'm not actually sure. We're going to bump up the system agent to 1.4 volts, which is still perfectly safe for long-term use. Uh, let's go to 4400. I, the kit might even be able to do 4533 CL17, but the issue is I don't think the memory controller on the CPU will. Like, 4533 CL17 is hard. Um, I guess we can try it. I'm tempted. I'm very tempted to just go for it. Yeah, let's just go for it. And that's why you don't just go for it. It just boot looped. And again. And... Oh, it figured it out. Int oh, no, it didn't. Yeah, no, it didn't. And the reset button doesn't work. Yay! <laughs> Need the power button. Oh, it trained. Oh, right, we're at 101 BCLK, so it's going to be a 4700. No wonder it was having a hard time. That's actually insane. Okay, so we're, we're just going to leave all the timings on auto, because I don't believe this is going to run anything once we get into Windows, but we can certainly try that. Oh, no, it is super, super unstable. Like, it's having a hard time posting reliably, so... Yeah, it's super unstable, so that's not going to work. Like, I guess I could loosen out the TRCD and that might fix it. Uh, at the, the thing is, at some point, you just get such a high clock speed that the memory controller can't deal with it, and I'm pretty sure we're at that point. Like, I'd probably need, like, 1.5 system agent to make this work, and for benchmarks, I'd be totally happy to run 1.5 uh, system agent, but for, like, a long-term, you know, daily overclock, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to run that much system agent on a, on a 14 nanometer Intel. So... Yeah, the board's really, like, this is really upset at this point. 79. 
I think it crashed trying to get into the BIOS. Man, isn't memory overclocking fun? So, actually, 4533 times 101 is going to be like 4580. That's that's fast. Like, that's actually, like, that's almost 4600. That's, that's up there. So, I guess I'll stick to that. I'm just hitting the clear CMOS button on the rear I.O. of the board. With a gigabyte motherboard, you'll actually want to be frequently saving memory profiles as you're, like, setting up your timing. Well, save save overclock profiles as you're uh, doing all your timings and that kind of thing. I already have a profile for, like, the baseline uh, overclock for this setup, so... Not too worried about, like, losing that or anything. Also, if you clear CMOS on these boards, they just boot loop like that. That's just a thing they do. Um... Now we're going to do four and last known good. Yay. Okay, so last known good. Like, last known good works a lot of the time, but I wouldn't, like, depend on it because sometimes uh, it doesn't remember the last settings you tried and that, then you're going to be very upset when you realize you have to reconfigure all of your settings again. So we're running 19, 19, 39, and we're going to go for 45, 33. So that's going to be like four. Yeah, that's going to be like 45, 80 um because of the 101 bclk so it should be fast man that, that is impressive like it just trained that so now can we make it into windows I, i'd expect it to make it like cl19 at 45 30, uh, 4580 is not that big a deal um that was just the capture card being stupid and my mouse doesn't work. Keyboard does work, but the mouse does not. Yeah, USB, thank you, Windows, for telling me something I'm already fully aware of. I'm just messing with the mouse. And it works again. Oh my god, the sensitivity. Okay, there we go. Um, so we're going to check ASRock Timing Configurator, because I actually want to see what the board set. So we're 1930, yeah, cool. 2T Command Rate, cool. Uh, 76, so those are RTLs, which that's what I'd expect at this speed. Um, the sub-timings are actually not that bad. Like, the WTRs are terrible, but that's mostly because of these. Um, we'll be tightening those up. I'll be tightening these up. Um, so we will do some tertiaries as well because they have a big performance impact. So um, at this point, let's let's quickly do a IDA bat like read and, and latency. I'm gonna start with memory latency because I'm actually not sure where this ends up. We're getting a thirty-eight point six. Yeah, see, so. That's the thing is like you went from 3600 CL 17 actually was it 14 7 whatever like from 3600 going to 4666 like I, I managed to actually lower the latency and a lot of people would expect the latency to actually go up but no um, the, the, at, like you can get low latency at very high speeds it's just a matter of having the like the memory configured correctly um, and then for read speed. Like, that's actually impressive for auto settings. That it's defaulting to such, like, good performance. And we're getting 63 gigs um, bandwidth. So that's nice. So at this point, what I want to run is... We're just going to hit it with Linpack. Because if, if Linpack gets upset, which Linpack gets upset very quickly compared to some of the other workloads, uh, then this is almost certainly not worth working on because there's very low very low chance that I'll make this work. So I'm just going to run three loops. We don't need to run a ton of loops. We just want to see if it like I honestly I'm kind of wondering if it'll even like do one loop. Um a lot of the time Linpack will just insta crash as soon as it loads up its entire data set. 
also want to have a core temp. Lint pack is very CPU heavy. And yeah, see, that's, that's why we run Lint pack. <laughs> Saves you a bunch of time if you know for a fact that your overclock isn't stable like that. Um, so the only issue is I don't actually know why it's unstable right now. I just know it's unstable. Um, so there's a few things I can try. Um, I can try uh, loosening out the TRCD. TRCD tends to be very memory controller intensive, so lo loosening that out might improve the stability. Um, alternatively, we can always drop the memory frequency, um, and, which is probably what I'll end up doing because uh, like TRCD can help, but generally it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, and it did just like insta crash, so it is very upset. Because yeah, we are we are running forty five eighty, um, or almost forty five eighty, which um, twenty two. Uh, also worth noting on mainstream Intel platforms, like a lot of motherboards will have a TRCD and TRP timing separate in the BIOS, but uh, these CPUs have like don't support actually setting those two uh, timings to different values, so. Uh, you have to set, like, well, I don't know which one takes priority, but you should just set them both to the same thing, because otherwise you won't be surprised when you, like, if you set different values, it'll use one of them. And I assume it just goes with the higher one, but I've I've not checked, and I, I'd assume it also varies by motherboard vendor. Um, so, yeah, let's see if 22 TRCD makes Linpack slightly less crashy. But I'd be very surprised if it does. Um, yes, yes, no. I want to see the memory loading up. So we're at 5.6 gigs, 6 gigs. When it hits, I think 7.5. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so the TRCD did not help. Um, we shouldn't need more memory voltage, 4580 at CL19 is not that tight. So at this point, I'm going to go and say it's not enough system agent, but I'm not going to go over 1.4 volts for long-term use. So we have no choice but to lower the frequency at this point, um, which is fine, but uh, kind of like it is a bit disappointing. The thing is, though, with the, the system agent, the it's far more tied to the actual frequency than the, say, the timings. So we should, like, even though, like, if going from 4400, from 4580 down to 4400, which actually we're not running 4400, we're running 4444. Because, um, again, we're, we have that 101 megahertz BCLK, which is completely fine. The BCLK is not an issue. Um it's just kind of like, you know, it's a little bit, it's 1% extra memory performance. <laughs> um, why am I running Ida? We just need to run Linpack. Like, that's all that really matters is just like, can you even do, because if you can't do one loop of Linpack, oh, and now the latency is really bad. I wonder what happened. This doesn't seem that different from before. Anyway, um, like we can worry about the latency later. Like, important thing is, does it crash? And it doesn't. Yay! See? So now now Linpack is actually running, um, which is great. That's that's what we want. That's that's kind of the point. If I could get core temp on the screen. There we go. The push-pull 240mm AIO is doing a decent job with this. Um, it is actually pretty warm in the room. It's like probably like 25 degrees right now. Um, it was 26 earlier... At, uh, earlier this night, so I'm, I'm assuming the temperature's been going down a bit um, since I last checked. 
and uh, I actually have no idea. Well, it says it passed, so I'm going to assume that residual is fine. And we are only getting 489 gigaflops, which isn't great, considering that um, the, like, the original stable overclock that I got set up on this was running, uh, four, like, it was doing, like, 490 gigaflops. Um, though, we'll be able to, like, I, most of that's down to just the timing differences at this point, and we should be able to claw that performance back just fine. I also want to see if we're getting, like, uh, any hardware errors that Linpack isn't picking up on. Annoying thing with Linpack is it does load cycle quite hard. Okay, so we got another result, and it's the same. Yeah, so both of them passed, and they're both exactly the same. They are both very slow, so I'm kind of disappointed with the performance right now, but uh, it does work. So I just wanted to do like two loops. I, d I wasn't really planning to do all three of them. Because um, that, that's like the trick to not spending forever overclocking is like run really aggressive stress tests and like crash them quickly. Because if you, if you spend forever sitting on, like, it, like there's no use in knowing that this setting is stable, right? Like, we're looking at the maximum, uh, over, we're looking for the maximum possible overclock. So we don't actually care about any settings that are stable that aren't approaching that maximum overclock. What we want to know is, like, is this extremely unstable? Is this slightly more stable? Is this slightly more stable until we get to something that is actually fully stable? So... You know, be, being stable at bad settings is just like, that's just a waste of time. There's no r real reason to, to fully test that. Um, actually, I'm going to go with 34 on that. Uh, TRC, 34 plus 18 is what? Um, 44 plus 52. Uh, and TWR 16, TCWL 16. The TCWL is one tick down from, well, rule of thumb for TCWL is one tick down from cast latency. Sometimes you can get it like two or three ticks down, but I normally go with one tick down. Uh, TRRDs 4-4. Four, four. Um, this is BDI. If it doesn't run 4-4, four, four, I'll be very, very surprised. Uh, T CCD 4-6 might be possible. Um, TRFC 300. It's BDI. Uh, RTP, I don't touch RTP. That that timing has caused me way too many issues in the past. I don't mess with that timing. Uh, 16 for T-Fall command rate. We're going to leave command rate at 2. Uh, for Well, actually, yeah, we're going to leave command rate at 2 for now. Uh, TREFI, we're going to set to 32,000. And, like, the issue here is this is B-Die. So I actually know exactly what all of these timings are supposed to end up at. And so I'm really... Like, I'm basically cheating. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. There we go. Actually, that's a bit loose. I'll probably go to... No, not that one. I'll be able to do 28. That's not 28. 28, 24. Now, there's a reason why I'm not setting uh, the WTR timings that you see up here. I'm not setting those because all those timings are actually used to do is they're used to configure the, these two timings down here. So if I set these two manually, there's no reason for me to configure the WTRs because they're just going to automatically match whatever is required for the WRRD settings that I, I've put in. Now, we're running a single rank memory setup with uh, one DIM in each channel, right? You can clearly see we've got one DIM in each channel. These are 8 gig DIMs. They use Samsung BDI. There's a single rank of memory on each of them. Um, so we don't have to worry about the DR and DD timings. We should be just able to set all of them to, to one. So we're going to do that. DR, DD, uh, one, DR, DD, one, one. Um, and then everything else. I'm actually pretty happy with, oh wait, these, these as well. Those can go to one. Um, yeah. And 
So that's all good. So at this point, we're actually going to go and save a profile. You do this by hitting F3. Um, and then we're going to do RAM daily. And I'm a very good typist. Like, I have to hold my hand pretty awkward. There's a mouse between me and the keyboard. Did I screw something up? Oh, no. I. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, see, it's fine. <laughs> so now it should be a lot faster. Unless something terrible happened to the RTLs and IOLs, but. There we go, GPU started working. So, RTLs and IOLs look, well, about what I'd expect at these settings. Unfortunately, I don't actually know how to set the RTLs and IOLs, um, so we're not going to do anything about those. Because my like any time I've tried to mess with them, I just end up with not being able to post. So the the most I ever do to RTLs and IOLs is check what the motherboard trains and then lock it in so that it doesn't get screwed up over time. And we're getting thirty eight point six nanoseconds of latency, so that's great. Um, read bandwidth, I'm assuming we're gonna hit like sixty six gigs, something like that. Um, Also, I should have... Oh, no, we're, we're just getting 64. That's actually kind of... I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah, there's no reason to run Geekbench 3 at this point. Let's just go straight to Linpack. So, 2, 3, uh, 3, yes, yes, no, and fire off Linpack. And I do want to see how much memory is being used, and I do also want to have Core Temp open, because... We want to watch the temperatures. So the thing is, as you overclock your memory, Linpack is very memory bound in terms of performance. So uh, it'll get like it'll potentially like it will actually get hotter as you overclock your memory um, and harder to run. Uh, so, yeah, it'll, like this is putting more load on the CPU and the ring. And so. That's kind of the thing is, like, if you overclock your memory last, you can de... Well, the, it's not so much... Like, if you start... Like, the thing is, you're just automatically going to assume that any instability you run into is a memory problem. And, you know, honestly, in a way, that's fine. Because if you reduce the memory settings down to something that, you know, gets the system back to being stable, but you still have higher performance, well, you still have higher performance, you've achieved what you came for. Um, yeah, so now you can see now we're getting 524 gigaflops instead of previously the little bit under 490 gigaflops. So Linpack is very, uh, like, well, not very memory bound, but pretty memory bound. Because um, that's a pretty big uplift in terms of performance right there from just some timing adjustments. In fact, it's a... seven percent uplift in performance from just like fiddling with the timings. Honestly, I, I'm kind of tempted to call this a day. <laughs> like we're already... I, I'd say this is already like 90 percent of the way for what I'd be willing to met, like run. Yeah, so there, there's loop two. Loop two's happy. So if I was actually stress testing, I would be running Linpack at 10 gigs memory usage, um, and I'd be running it out to like 20. Well, actually, you should be running it for like over half an hour. So you know, for 10 gigs, I assume I would have to run something like 40, 50 loops of Linpack, um, and then I'd also run Prime 95. That and actually, I my order for like memory, I would do Linpack, then MemTest, and then at the very end, Prime95. Though I guess you could also do like Linpack, a little bit of Prime95, and then MemTest, and then more like Prime95 at the end of it. Um, and then overnight your mem, like if you're actually doing it daily, I would also overnight the MemTest at, at one point, like because you can literally just leave MemTest running overnight. It's not very hot. 
um, well, it's not very hot for your CPU. It is very hot. Like, it does get your memory sticks hot, which, uh, yeah, um, you know, if you want to see if your memory is very stable, you can just leave the M-Test running overnight, and then the next day, you'll, like, you might come, you might come back to a blue screen, but it's really not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, at this point, I'm kind of wondering what, what this will do in Geekbench 3 for performance, because the latency in Ida is pretty good. The bandwidth is, uh, not as high as I was hoping it would be, but... 64 gigs is not bad. Actually, I wonder if I, like, massively o overestimated what 44, uh, 44 is capable of doing. Because there is a chance of that. Um. I'm doing the math wrong, aren't I? It's 44, 44... Times the 128, because we've got two 64-bit channels, divided by 8. No, so max bandwidth, like, max theoretical bandwidth for the current memory frequency is 71 gigs per second. Um, and I'm only getting 64. So there's still some headroom in the, in the timings for a little bit, like, for more, more bandwidth. Yeah, 8,400. There's more headroom. We can go faster. I can definitely go faster than this. I wonder if this kit will do 17, 16, 16 at 44, 44. Like, it's not necessarily impossible, though the CPU might get very upset about that. Actually, I want to check something. 3,600 divided by 14... 17. Okay, so there's probably not any headroom in the CAS, uh, in the TCL, but, uh, like, in the CAS latency, there's probably not any headroom left. But TRCD is a funny timing, because a lot of the XMPs that you see for various memory kits will be, like, 1415, or the most extreme example I can think of for a BDI memory kit is 1722. Um, and the reason why you see this, like, TCL lower, significantly lower than TRCD is not because BDI requires loose TRCD. It's just that loose TRCD is, uh, well, a lot of memory controllers will complain if your TRCD is really low. Not like the memory sticks will be fine with it. It's just like your memory controller won't be able to deal with it. Um, so 17, 16, 16 from the memory stick side should be perfectly fine. From the CPU side, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Well, it's not necessarily perfect, it should be perfectly fine, but with a lot of memory sticks, this shouldn't actually cause issues. Um, yeah, it does look very weird. And in fact, if you were on a if you were on an AMD platform, the TRP timing can go even like significantly below TRCD further. So then you could end up with something like, uh, though also AMD CPUs I think have an even worse weakness on TRCD. Um, but uh, it depends on your CPU. Um, the thing is, like you could end up running something that looks like fifteen, seventeen, twelve. Or something like that. Or you could end up with like 17, 16, 12 or, or something. It's a bit unfortunate that Intel doesn't allow you to adjust TRP separately from TRCD because it would be really cool to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, I'm just wondering like what knocking down those two timings did to the latency. So previously we were getting about 38 nanoseconds. Now we're getting a little under 38. So that's nice. Um, it's nice and quick. Now, how unstable is it? That is the question, isn't it? Three, yes, yes, no. Also, we get a nice little performance indicator in Linpack. Like, that's the other reason I like it. It tells you if you're faster. It tells you if you're stable. Um... It's great. Like, why doesn't everybody use this?
Okay, it passed, and we're getting 528 gigaflops. So we picked up four flops. Yay! Or four gigaflops. It's not really much, um, but admit it, like, it's a one tick timing, like, it's two timings getting adjusted by, like, one tick. So I didn't really expect much. Or actually two ticks. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't really have high expectations, but it, it didn't insta-crash. Like, we, we can keep pushing. Um, I'm surprised that the CPU tolerated that. Like, I wasn't expecting it to do TRCD 16. I wonder if we can do TRCD 15. Like, that would be ridiculous, but not, like, it's not impossible. It's just, like... And if it does TRCD 15, I'm going to start strongly suspecting that I can run cast latency 16. Um, oh my god, it trains? Damn. <laughs> These sticks are so good. These are just so... Like, I don't actually think that I have a kit that'll boot these settings right now. Like, other than these, and maybe... Like, I actually have two sets of these uh, extreme ARGB sticks from, from Team Group. And so, I don't actually think any other kits that I have... Like, so I've not checked the other kit. And this, this one is the stronger of the two kits I have, I think. Um, there, there's a sticker on the back of them, let me check. Yeah, I'm actually Okay, now I can't remember if it's one point it's if the stronger kit is one point five three volts or one point five four volts uh on the label. But uh anyway, like there's not much of a difference between the two kits, so I'd assume like if this kit um is capable of running this, then I'd assume the other one is probably also pretty capable like might also be able to run something like this, which is uh which is pretty ridiculous. Because this is quick. Like 50, like, I mean, even if I can't work the TCL down, that's completely fine with me. Because TRCD actually has a pretty significant performance impact. Uh, which is probably part of why it's also so very, very stability sensitive. And it didn't insta-crash. Man. I need to try this on my other CPU as well. Like, these kinds of settings. I am so impressed with these dims right now. Like I, I, I didn't think fifteen would even train, and it's just like, oh, it does. Like it, it doesn't even insta crash lin pack, which is ridiculous in my opinion. And it failed the residual. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a little bit too good if it, if it didn't, you know, start screwing up calculations at this point, but. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you were one of the people who's willing to bend over backwards to keep their memory cool, um, you could bump up the memory voltage at this point and uh, run TRCD15. I'm not really a fan of that. Um, so we're not going to do that. Like, I'm pre like, I like to stick to 1.5 volts for memory voltage for day-to-day -day overclocking just because I, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um... Like, going from 1.5 to 1.55 volts might stabilize the TRCD, but it's not that much of a performance difference between 16 TRCD and 15 TRCD. Um, so at this point, I wonder if we can run just straight 16s. Like, that would be pretty cool. Um, but I actually suspect that might not even train. Or it does. Damn. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that it even booted 1715 is insane, though. At 1.5 volts, like, that is... That is insane. I wonder if maybe you went, like, through a bunch of sets of these. Eventually, you might find a set that does TRCD15 fully stable at just 1.5 volts. Oh, and it, I guess it crashed. 
Okay, so yeah, TCL 16 is too much, which is basically what I was expecting. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of funny how that works, isn't it? Where it's like the XMP profile on these is 14, 15, 15. So you'd think if you were overclocking them, the TRCD would have to be like one tick above TCL or at best equal. But no, 17, 16, 16 is fine. 16, 16, 16 isn't. Um, because TRCD normally is loose for compatibility purposes, not for uh, actual like memory requirements. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, what else can we do now? I kind of want to tr try one tick command rate, but before we do that, we're going to save profile there. Profile saved, and then we're going to try one T command rate. Because I have very low hopes of that working. Oh my god. Wait, seriously? It just did one T like that? That is amazing. That's not so much on the kit as it is on the motherboard, but that is amazing. Like, it just does one T. And it, it's not like it even spent, like, a month training. Like, if you had a... Like, for comparison, I did some memory overclocking on the Maximus 12 Apex recently. And that board, if you if you run one T command rate, you're going to be sitting on the 4F postcode for a while. Every single time you boot, because... Uh, Asus just has some extra training routines that take place in order to make 1T command rate work. And this board, you just punch in 1T and it instantly... Yeah, it, it just instantly fires up. Um, so that is really impressive. So now I wonder what the latency is like. These dims are insane. Like if this if I get if I can actually do a full like stress test pass uh, th this is the reason why I don't stress out so much about 1T command rate. Like a lot of people are super focused on getting 1T command rate but then then it's like you run like Ida or something and it's just like oh look you knocked off half a nanosecond off of your latency good job. <laughs> that was really worth all that extra effort wasn't it? And admittedly, a lot of the time, 1T command rate is just a matter of, like, either your motherboard does 1T or it doesn't. So there's not really, um, th there's not really a lot of work that goes into it, in my opinion. I, I guess maybe if you knew enough about memory overclocking, you could get even the motherboards that don't just immediately do 1T to do 1T. But, yeah, that's, that's not me. I'm, I'm wondering what it did to, to Geekbench. Because the thing is... Like, as much as people like using IDA for their uh, memory benchmarking, IDA's actually really insensitive. And Dijkstra got very upset about that. So I'm assuming if we try to run Linpack, it's just going to immediately explode. Um, three, yes, yes, no. Like, as soon as it loads up all of the data into memory, it's just going to die. So that's, a, like, that's unfortunate. Yep, that's exactly what it did. It just locked up. Oh, and the reset button stopped working. That's fun. Yep, that's reset button's gone. So we're... Oh, wait, no, it shut down. I guess it wasn't completely locked up yet. Like, sometimes you can crash so hard that the reset stops working. Um, but it didn't just do that. Okay, so 1T command rate, I'm not sure that I would prioritize 1T command rate over 2. I'm, I guess we can just try 1T at a slightly lower frequency. See what happens. So previously, we'd, we'd be getting like 8,400 in Geekbench. So if we can do more than that, then 1T command rate is worth it. If we can't, do more than that, then it's not worth it, as far as I'm concerned. 
Alternatively, another good uh, memory benchmark is the TimeSpy uh, CPU test, or, well, good. It, it's a decent memory benchmark. Uh, there's always LinPack as well. Though, actually, we could just ask LinPack. Why worry about Geekbench when, you know, LinPack will tell us two things. Is it faster? And it'll also tell us, is it stable? Um, which is obviously the more important part if you're going for a daily setup, because it's like, yeah, it's fast, but it crashes as soon as you try to do literally anything. Is it's not very useful in your in your day to day, you know, in your daily use system. So, yeah, and there it goes. Okay, so one T command rate is a bad idea as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> which is roughly what I was expecting, but. Oh, oops. Gonna go back up to two, and I guess we can try TCWL 15. I think this is actually pretty, like this is probably pretty close to maxed out. Like. TRFC might go a little bit lower. TREFI might go a little bit higher. Like, 36,000 might work. Um, so, I want to try this, because... So the interesting thing about Gigabyte um, BIOS is it gives you access to a lot of memory timings that you don't get access to on, like, especially Asus motherboards. Like, TRC, I don't think, is accessible on, like, I don't, I, Asus doesn't have TRC, I know for a fact. I don't think MSI has it either accessible. And I'm not sure if it actually applies, but at least on AMD systems, um, it is always, like, everybody has it available on AMD. And on, AM on AMD, TRC is actually, like, has a pretty significant performance impact. So that's why I'm just messing with it right now, because I'm not 100% certain. Um, yeah, unfortunately, as, as much as I do a lot of memory overclocking, I am not the world's best memory overclocker. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I, it's just, like... Absolutely not. Um, the thing is, is just like memory overclocking to me is just like be brave and try stuff. Because the, the thing is, you're not going to break your memory sticks by changing memory timings. Just like, fun fact, that doesn't break memory sticks. Um, you can technically corrupt operating systems with unstable memory overclocks. Windows 10 is especially not that robust in my experience. So... Oh, like, of all the operating systems I've broken, Windows 10 is the one that I break the most consistently. Um, with, like, unstable memory overclocks. So, I, I guess if you were doing this on a daily system and you have a lot of files you care about, um, you should probably get, like, a cheap second-hand SSD. Like, it doesn't need to be fast, it doesn't need to be get big. It just needs to be able to have Windows 10 installed, Linpack, you know, maybe Geekbench 3 for benchmarking purposes... IDA, um, Hardware Info, and Prime95. Oh, and, like, your mem a memory test of your choice. I like HCI mem test, right? Um, and that's all you really need. And, oh, it is an Insta-crashing. That's nice. Um, but is it faster? So, previously, the record for Linpack here is 528. Uh, so, we need to go faster than 528. And we're getting 525. So it's actually slower. Okay, well, that's a problem.
Actually, I wonder what happens if you just set the TRC really, really low. Like, I've never tried this, so this is a bad idea. Oh, man, th this is awful. The video is almost an hour, and I I've just gotten distracted by, like, oh, I've never tried this before. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, well. Like, this is the thing, is, like, memory overclocking in my... Like, it's tedious, it's boring, but if you like, you know... Well, if you just enjoy the overclocking process, there's not much better than memory overclocking because you've got so many timings to play with, don't you? And you can be bored out of your mind for hours. And then eventually, you know, you'll you'll be like, okay, I finally have timings where it's like, I, I want to f do like a full stress test pass to prove that they're actually completely stable. And then three hours into mem test, you get one error and you have to start all over again. <laughs> And that is the memory overclocking experience. And I don't know why I closed task manager. I actually need the, the readout for how much memory is being used. Because, like, I'm wondering if you can just, like, drop the TRC and get a performance improvement. Or if it just does nothing. Actually, an easier test would be to just set the TRC impossibly low, and if it doesn't post, then that tell like, if you, like, set the TRC super low, and see if it still posts. And still 524. Okay, so I guess the TRC setting might not do anything. Or maybe, like, there's also a chance that if you just set it too low, the board auto corrects for you, so. Um, if you screw it up, it doesn't work. Hmm. Okay, so I'm actually, like, I think this is pretty much... Like, I feel like these settings are almost done. Now, one thing I want to experiment with is uh, getting the, like, seeing if the board will train better uh, RTLs if we just mash a bunch of system agent voltage into it. Because um, that was a trick I used early, like, earlier today to, to do exactly that, um, to get it to train different RTLs, but I'm not sure how reliable that is. And I would never daily 1.6 volts um, system agent. But no, that didn't that didn't do anything. Um, okay, um, so that's that's annoying. Okay, well we're gonna save a profile and do something very stupid. That's what profiles are for. <laughs> Doing stupid things. We're gonna try to. Like, if this posts, I'll be extremely surprised. Because my experience with trying to touch anything labeled IOL or round-trip latency, which is what I call the R... Like, RTL stands for round-trip latency. Um, and IOL stands for IO latency. Um, yeah, so my experience with messing with either of those is that I touch them and the system stops posting. Uh, as we can see right now, right here, because I actually... like. There's a system to what they're supposed to be, and I don't know what that system is. Like, they're the, probably the only timings I'm aware of where there's probably an actual usable formula that you should probably know. Um, like, the like you could actually build a calculator for RTLs and IOLs, though I think it would have to be motherboard-specific. Um, and yeah, I don't know how to set them. As you can clearly see.
Yeah. Okay. We're we're gonna clear Seamoss. Four. Actually, we can use last known good again. Actually, what is the last known good? Because there's a chance... Okay, it's this one, so... That's bad. Um, I'm going to save and reset. Why is it having trouble training? Oh, there we go. So I wonder if now we ended up... Like, the thing is, every time you retrain fully, there's a chance... And they didn't change. I'm brave. I'm I'm feeling very brave. <laughs> We're going to try that. Cuz there's got to be like there normally there's like a single digit value somewhere that works. And well 7 I guess is not it. So I'm going to try six. Because the thing is, if you get the RTLs and IOLs correct, like, that can make a very big difference to the latency. So, I would like that to... Like, it would be cool if I could get that down. Um, but, yeah, you know, very difficult when you don't actually know how to set them. Yeah, I don't think that works. It's just getting to D5 and failing immediately. Yeah, no. It doesn't work. So I'm going to give up on that. So we're going to load our profile. And I'm going to 
just do one last check of if there's anything that I like actually care about lowering. Oh, actually we should save and like train the settings. Because there are a couple values that I still have on auto, and it's just like, so what do those go to? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything worth changing. So at this point, what I will do, however, for, for the IOLs and RTLs is I will actually lock in the, like, correct values. Just so that if, you know, it never, like... The thing is, sometimes uh, the motherboards will actually not, like, if you reboot frequently enough, then sometimes you'll actually boot with different RTLs than you're supposed to have. And then your stability goes, like, either your stability or performance or both just get really, really bad. So, the first values are that work are, like, where we're just going to use them. Um, now, uh, Shift-B... Go. Was it just fixing the uh, capture card? All right. This one trained fifteen. Okay. Well, that's fine. Like a one tick difference between uh, your two dim slots. That's not a big deal. If it was like fifteen seven, then we have a problem or something like that. Um. Anyway, so now I want to run Geekbench again. Because I do wonder how this performs. Like, obviously we have some of the, like, the performance from, uh, Linpack, but I also want to get, like, y you shouldn't just use one benchmark. Um... And speaking of Linpack, like, when I had it initially dialed in, it would be normally getting, like, 40, 49, uh, I mean, 499 gigaflops. And right now it's spitting out around 524. Um, so we're just going to divide that by 499, and that's about 5%. Um, great, so we're getting 8.6 thousand Geekbench 3, which is good. Um, for overall multi-core score went up... Uh, almost a thousand points previously this would get like 40,047 or 40,033 and now we're getting 40,922 which is a i'm gonna go against the best one which was uh 40 40,047 um and that's a two percent performance uplift in the multi-core score right there um, we can also run cinebench though i expect cinebench to see the smallest if not non-existence performance uplift so previously the top score for cinebench was uh 5285 and that was after four reruns and it looks like the memory is stable because like cinebench just died seriously Man, I forgot how long R20 takes. So one of the issues with Cinebench is the score goes up as you rerun it. So at like the like the before the memory overclocking, I ran it four times and it did 5250, 5269, 5278, and 5285. So I don't know, 5300 would be nice to see, but. It, like it's Cinebench it, <laughs> picking up uh, uh, 20 points for memory overclocking well we'll see oh nice actually that's way more than I expected to see in Cinebench 
then again, I guess this isn't Ryzen, so we don't have that massive blob of L3 cache and terrible memory setup, so... Yeah, the, the memory performance scaling is significantly better. And by significantly better, that's like 1%. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's basically 1% right there. Because that's like a 50-point up, uplift on a 5,000-point score. So, yeah, that's that's 1%. Great. Amazing. So I'll just let it finish this one, the second loop, and then we're going to run Time Spy Physics. Okay, 5332. Um, yes, I do want to stop. So it didn't improve the second time. Gonna go details, because we don't want to run everything. We just want to run the, the CPU test. It's a little, like, the reason why I click off the window is you saw how those came back after I turned them off. It's like, yeah, that's why I click off the window. It helps speed that up, or at least I, I think it helps it speed that up. So previously this test was doing uh, 12,676 points. I would expect this to get, well, I'd be hoping over 13,000. was nice and quick. Yeah, actually, that's a nice little uplift, right? 13,301 points, which, uh, how much How much is of an improvement is that? So 13,301 versus uh, 12. Okay, so previously the best r te uh, run I had was a 12,74, uh, I mean 12,73,4. Uh, so we're going to divide by that. So 12,73,4. And 4.4% performance uplift in Time Spy. Um, and again, Time Spy has some run to run variants, so really you should run it a couple times. Previously, I ran it four times, and uh, the scores were 12676, 12653, 12734, and 12711. Um, I did the, the percentage comparison against the best score I ran before, just in case, you know, the score I got right now was the best one I was going to get, um, even though that's kind of unlikely. So now we're going to run Linpack. I wonder, like, Cinebench had some, like, errored out for some reason, but I wonder if that might have just been because Geekbench was open or some weird software co conflict. I guess we'll find out if, like, Linpack decides to not run. Now, Linpack seems pretty happy. So, yeah, at this point, all that's left is to just stress test this, which, you know, HCI mem test, Linpack, um, Prime95. Because the thing is, we need to rerun Prime95 because we want to know that the CPU is still stable because the memory overclock might have destabilized the CPU. In which case, I would just lower the memory overclock because uh, memory performance is, you know, memory like memory speed has uh, is second in line to like CPU speed. Oh, we actually get five two nine. That's neat. I guess if you have the TRC set correctly, it actually works the way it's supposed to, and if you set it too low, then it doesn't work. Okay, so Linpack is seeing maybe like up to a 6% performance improvement. We'll see if the second loop is the same or, or better. It would be really cool if, if stress tests just ran way faster. <laughs> that That is the, my least favorite part of memory overclocking is just like... Well, actually, it's not that bad. Like, if you overnight it, it's not a big deal, right? And also, memtest, like... You can web browse with, like, well, 
you can still do, like you know you can still browse around the internet while memtest is running and that one failed okay so the memory settings or the cpu settings aren't particularly stable um so i guess maybe cinebench did crash because this isn't stable and not because of some weird like random issue uh, i just want to check that this is actually what is that that's five ten so that's seven gigs uh that's 20 threads 14 gigs yeah this should be fine like technically we're on a 16 thread cpu but there's nothing actually like there's nothing forcing you to run as many threads as you have threads just kind of things get kind of upset if you have a lot of stuff running at the same time so what i want is performance and yeah we're using 15 gigs of memory right now so basically all of the memory available on the system and uh, what I want to do is Windows tab is the shortcut I do for the use for this. And, and yeah, Memtest isn't puking out any errors. So I guess it destabilized the ring or the, the core overclock when, when I... Oh, wait, no. No, the memory's not stable. Okay, well, that makes life... My well, <laughs> I, I say memory not stable. Ultimately, Memtest has to move that... Like, when Memtest runs, right, it puts data in the memory... And then it pulls the data in from the memory, and then it puts it back into the memory. And it's just like, well, where does the data go in that process? Well, it goes through the CPU. So technically speaking, there's still a chance I destabilized, like, the ring. I don't think I destabilized the core, because Memtest doesn't really hit the core that hard. But you do still need to push all of the data through the ring interconnect. So, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe I could experiment with dropping the ring ratio a, a tick. Um, and see if it clears up. At the same time, there's a pretty good chance it's just a memory error. So, yeah, the thing is, at this point, you just end up in the never-ending cycle of fiddling with memory settings until it's stable. Or until you go insane. I, whichever comes first, right? <laughs> um. So, I don't know why I'm doing that. Windows tab is so much more convenient. There's just one error, though. I was kind of hoping for it to, like, flood with errors after the first one. Because a lot of the time that, that happens, like, you get one error and then you get, like, 20 more right after it. But, nope, this is just, like, one error. Um, oh, that reminds me. I was running a stress test with a memory kit on a different motherboard, different CPU... And it was super, what was super annoying is I think I left it overnight or something and I came back and it was at like 3000% and there was one error. And it wasn't like, I don't think the error was even recent. Like it probably erred at like 1500%, like 1500% or something. And then by the time I got back, it was like one error. And it was just like, oh, that is so, so annoying. So... Anyway, I'm just going to escape out of all of that. Oh, now we're getting more errors. Yeah, so... Um, yay, memory overclocking. So now, now I get to go, you know, I, I assume it's the primaries. Like, the thing is, the secondary timings that I'm running are the same secondary timings I run basically on every kit of B-Die. So I really doubt those are causing issues. Whereas the primaries, like, 17, 16, 16 is really tight. Um, and the room is a bit warm. Actually, if we, if we cooled the memory sticks down a bit, uh, that, that could probably help with that. Which, speaking of cooling, um, yeah, the, the RGB on these sticks is actually kind of, a a bit of a thermal, like, it's not, like, it's not a huge issue, but definitely, like, well, Team Group does offer a non-RGB version of this speed bin. Um, they didn't at the time that I requested a review sample of these, so that's kind of, that's kind of why I have the RGB version, it's just like, I didn't really care about the RGB, it was just kind of like, oh, they're making a 3600CL14 kit, I want to test it. Um, and, uh, yeah, at the time, the only option for that was an RGB kit, so I have an RGB, so now I have two RGB kits, and they do look very pretty, but plastic, unfortunately, does not make for a great heatsink. Um, they do have an aluminum tab on the actual memory chips for, for cooling them, but, um, yeah. Well, the funny thing about memory heatsinks, actually, is the heatsink that you have on the, like, the, the, like, the RGB diffuser that is facing us. Like, normally that side of a memory stick, 
isn't even like the of a memory stick heatsink isn't even attached to the memory stick using a thermal pad. It's normally attached to the memory stick using like double sided tape. Um, and I don't mean thermal tape. I mean freaking like foam squishy, you know, like therm probably more thermally insulating than actually thermally conductive tape. Um, so I honestly don't think the plastic is that big a deal. Um, and quite frankly, 17, 16, 16 is, is very aggressive and having, uh, potentially temperature issues or, uh, or just, you know, well, it might not be like, probably it's just not enough voltage for timings this tight, but yeah. So I'm not like, like, I don't find the RGB that big a deal. Cause the other thing is I also like with the stock XMP, I actually took these sticks and ran them under a hairdryer, which means basically 60 degrees ambient, um, and they were perfectly stable under that, under those conditions. So, um, yeah, um, th this is probably just too aggressive. Um, I don't think the RGB is that big a deal here. Though at the same time, I haven't done like a temperature test for, for these sticks against other sticks, but then I'd also have to like match the power. Oh man, that's going to get so annoying. Well, we'll see. Like I have, I I'm planning to do a full review of these, um, but for now, we're just going to do this sort of, like, memory overclocking video. And I got to say, like, the memory chips are great. Like, being able to even boot 1715 is insane. The fact that 1716 doesn't run is not really that surprising. I mean, if it did work, I'd be very... <laughs> like, if this, if the settings I have right now worked, I'd be very impressed and very surprised. Because, um, yeah. Like, but if we can run, like, 17, 17, 17... Um, that's where, like, that's still really good at 44, 45, right? Um, 17, 17, 17 is that, that, that's fast. That's really fast. Um, so yeah. And I guess some people, you know, and then there's always the people who are like, well, I'm, I actually don't mind running my memory at even higher voltages with even worse temperature tolerance. So yeah, if you're into that, you could totally go, like, if, I think if I bumped this up to, like, 1.55, maybe 1 1.6 volts, it would fix the stability. But uh, at the same time, it would probably introduce more instability with operating temperature. So then it's like, well, you, you might, at that, at that point, it's like, oh, now we need to run a fan on the memory sticks. And in my opinion, that kind of defeats the purpose of having memory sticks this RGB, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, like that, that's it for this video. So hopefully this gave you some, some idea of how like memory overclocking works. There's not really that much to it. You just kind of mess with, with memory settings until like you get bored of it or you get a stable, like actually mostly until you get bored of it because there's always more things to fiddle with, isn't there? Um, because it's like, oh, I finally got a stable memory overclock. And then three days later, you get bored and go like, but what if I changed this timing by one tick? <laughs> what if I did that? I haven't tried that yet. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Thank you to Team Group for providing the memory kit. Um... And, uh, yeah, um, what's, what else? Oh, right. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual, uh, YouTuber merch. And, uh, yeah, that is it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.